Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome again, everybody. Bearbets podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns this season. And this week, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet wins. Download the app, use the promo code BearBets. That's BearBets, two words. When you sign up, DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. It's kind of a, a bittersweet weekend, Jeff, just because it's the end of the regular season for college football. It's a uh, rivalry weekend is always great. Uh, you got games Thanksgiving night. You got Tulane playing Thursday night, who we're certainly involved in. Uh, Friday, we got a bunch of games. Saturday, we got a bunch of games. But uh, these conference titles are, are, are coming down to the, uh, the the bitter end. I'll be in Columbus this weekend for, uh, for Ohio State, Michigan, so really no conference title odds really to to bet there is there anything still potentially out there that you might want to take a little bit of a uh a nibble at you know how I, you use really I, nib- I, nibble, I, nibble I, food I, ah. I, uh, i've tried to look at some of these bear and think i could find some value i mean i sent that convoluted national championship thing to you guys and you guys just laughed at me about taking both oregon and, and ohio state a couple weeks ago because they're essentially both going to play each other in the in, in the semifinal game, which is what it's setting up to be. And you basically have you you had them basically almost four to one both a couple weeks ago to win the championship, not not just the Big Ten. Because I looked, one's going to be the one seed, one's going to be the five seed. They're going to play each other again in in three weeks here um, in the semifinals. And if you have plus four hundred for both of them, um, then you're going to advance someone to the championship game with, with a ticket, but you might roll over the money lines. It was a, a disaster. Uh, I don't <laughs> think I have much for, for I mean, what, what what the value is now? You've missed all the value. I mean, we've been talking about SMU now for, for weeks. I mean, you've lost the value in all, the, in, all, in all these wagers. So I would say nothing right now. I do think that the price of, I think people are, are a little bit lower in Oregon than they, they should be, in my opinion. But not to the point where I think you bet the money line right now against basically not the money line, but you bet the the future and then win the Big Ten championship game. I would probably just wait until next week. Correct. I mean, they're, yes. they're, they're going to be. I think they're going to be an underdog in that game. Oh, they will be by and, three, <laughs> two and a half, three probably. Yeah, so I, I, you'll probably get a little bit of a, a a better a better price there if 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 you just wait. And I would think people are probably going to bet up Ohio State. It's going to uh, be a very well. very like public Joe's on Ohio State. I think both will be in Ohio State. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. The the one conference title bet that I would make, and I know we have a little bit of a conversation about Boise State uh, in the gambling group chat. I would look at UNLV uh, plus two forty right now to to uh, win the win the Mountain West. I don't know what the number is going to be uh, next week in that game on Boise's home field. But the way Boise has been trending lately, uh, it was not a convincing win uh, against San Jose State. It was not a convincing win uh, against Wyoming. Uh, UNLV really had that game, but a couple of untimely penalties uh, really hindered them. Plus 240 is the price that uh, DraftKings has. Uh, I don't know what other numbers exist out there. But if Genty's beat up, that's a really good UNLV defense, and I, I think they can slow uh, Boise State down. Uh, that, that's the one I would potentially uh, yeah. take a look at, UNLV Mountain West. And the other one which I would love to maybe fool around with is uh, Conference USA. Uh, Sam Houston State is plus 900 to win the, the title. The problem is Jacksonville State is already in the game and they play Western Kentucky this week. So Jacksonville State has like no incentive whatsoever to win that game, whereas yeah. Western Kentucky has to win to get the rematch. 
So like I think Sam Houston State will win that game on Friday and then just hope for yeah. hope for the best. But uh in, in my column that I have coming out on FoxSports.com, Sam Houston plus three is definitely a play against Liberty for me. So the Mountain West Championship game is Friday the sixth. You will be there. Is that night game or a day game? game? It's, uh, I believe it is 5 o'clock okay. local, I believe. So 8 Eastern. So, 70, I mean, 7 Eastern, I think. <clears throat> UNLV on the road in that weather, I'm looking at it right now, I mean, it's going to be high of 45 that day. That feels tough for UNLV to win that game. Okay. I don't care how beat up Genty is. So that's my only pushback on, okay. on that one there. You can push back. Well, you I know I can. Back. I do this. this. I'm a snarky in this, on this gambling group chat. Be ready. Yeah, you know, I was going to say you, you you're starting with the pushing back, and now you're going to continue with the pushing back uh, in the in the gambling group chat. As Sammy P and Will are going to feel the wrath of Jeff as well right now. Enjoy for the final time this regular season. College gambling group chat. Self Jeff drum with Sammy P and Will Hill. Uh, tons of great games. We're one of the the best weekends uh, in the sport. The, all the r- traditional rivalries going on. And it is great to see one of those traditional robberies uh, taking place again this week with so much on the line. I even wrote a little little piece for Big Dune Kickoff this week, so hopefully you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. Texas, Texas A&M uh, at Kyle Field. Winner goes to Atlanta for the SEC Championship game, which I don't even know if the winner really does want to go to the SEC Championship game. But uh, it is important for playoff berth, especially – uh, for the Aggies, who are a five and a half point home underdog here to Texas after uh, losing that over multiple overtime game at Jordan Hare last week to Auburn. Texas is one of those teams where we really can't figure out offensively. They kind of been kind of stuck in the mud for lack of a better better phrase, just not clicking. Uh, on con- on a consistent basis defensively, I think they are really really good. Uh, when they needed a drive last week, when they were on their last game to kind of create some separation, they got it. But this is kind of no man's land right here at uh at, at five and a half. Sammy, do we think this thing gets to six, or we think it clicks more uh, back down towards the opener? It's tough to say. When they opened it up Sunday afternoon, they hung a five. First bet down to three. Probably a fake because it's been one yep. way all the way since. Now, this did touch six a couple days ago. When it got to six, we saw the money on the dog. So five, five and a half is probably a good gauge on where it's going to land on Saturday. This is a late kick um, in College Station. I like the total. A&M let Auburn do whatever it wanted for two, three quarters, and then finally put the clamps on. I did have Auburn in the game. Bear, you and I were sweating yeah. Auburn money line. Never in Ooh. doubt. Four Ooh. overtimes. Easy. Easy peasy. 21 nothing, And then tied in overtime. I like over. I think Texas can can move the ball against A&M. And A&M's probably going to move the ball a little bit on Texas as well. So I, I lean over. I think it's like a 27-24, 30-27 type game. I do like over. If anything, I would take the points because uh, I keep thinking this A&M defense is good. And I, I said last week, this time, the A&M defense, the front four, the, the defense for a is going to be the best unit on the field against Auburn. And I blink and it's 21 nothing Auburn. So maybe I'm overrating them, but I do think at home, rivalry game, that field, that environment against the Texas offense where I'm still not sure, like just level of competition, as you mentioned, Bear. Uh, yours is banged up. Bondi is banged up. The receiver. Uh, I think this is more of a grinded out game, so I lean under. I, I like AM, I think, more than the under, but uh, maybe I've overrated a and here. Maybe I just m- maybe they're not as good as I think they are, Jeff. Well, so last week, Mike Elko, their head coach, was asked about if they're looking ahead. And his answer was, we're not looking ahead to to, oh, to, to Auburn. Oh, no, we, we, we put Auburn this weekend. Like, they were, they were looking ahead so much to this game. So, I think last weekend you sort of maybe throw out when it comes to how they're going to play this weekend. One thing to note about Texas' offense, guys, they have underperformed to expectations nearly every week of the season. You know, like, the, people set the number for what they're going to be. They go under that number a lot, and their fishing has not been as high. Then you face an A&M defense that can rush the passer – and, and not to get in the weeds too much, I, I watched the Arkansas-Texas game. Arkansas basically played a five-man box most of the game, six-man box. They ran that 3-3 stack thing, and they shut down Texas for the most part. Like I just, The offense, to me, is not reliable in this game. So for, it'd be, for me, it'd be 
A&M points or nothing in this game. I kind of want to sit back and watch the the carnage of what happens uh, in this game. Bear and I, I know, have that Texas ticket um, for, to, not, to not make the playoffs. It's probably dead, Bear, depending on what happens this weekend. But probably. I think I'm rooting for A&M just to see if we can cash that wager. Because um, I think A&M is also worse than Texas. And now it sounds weird to say, but like when you get into a playoff situation, if I'm Oregon, would I rather play Texas or Texas A&M? I probably would rather play a and I know that sounds odd, but I just think that in that situation, nonetheless, I'm rooting for a and Put it like that. But by, by the way, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, or maybe this clip will be on social media, that is a fire jersey. That thing is awesome, and I absolutely need to get yeah. one of those. Move the mic. Move the it's, mic. Show us the duck. There we go. That is my so Oregon bad. hockey sweater. I've been waiting to wear this all year, and it's Husky Hate Week, and I figured I'd bring it out for Oregon, the only undefeated team in the country right now, going to make a 12-0 this weekend. When they win it all, he's going to mail us all all sorts of Oregon swag. I'm never talking to you guys ever again if they win the championship. I, I, I I'm not talking to anyone ever. Sam, Sammy doesn't invite Sammy doesn't invite us to the Cape party for Thanksgiving because he doesn't want us nope. to have oysters and, and, and lobster. But and now Jeff doesn't send us that Oregon hockey jersey. Like picture like Minnesota North Star type colors, green green and yellow with with the white trim and, and like that big North Star logo that they had on it with the N like but with a duck face with with puddles on there. It is it almost it I almost paid like for the this old Anaheim Mighty Ducks the old uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks logo you know is kind of similar to that one. I paid for this by myself. I didn't get this for free. I bought it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the we, website right we, now. We believe that we, 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 you're just trying to get off of like avoiding uh, reporting like IRS gifts that you've been. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's unavailable at the moment, by the way, guys. So you can't order the jersey. I'm sorry. Is it that that that, that does not surprise me? Get, yeah. they, um, was that part of your I'm recruiting big, pitch? They gave you that jersey with like a big stack of cash underneath. Yes, like blue yeah, chips? That, yeah, the big bucket of cash. Yep. Yeah. I I, I didn't want a tractor. I just wanted cash. I, I, don't, I don't. Jeff, Jeff mentioned the, uh, the the Texas no playoff ticket. Do you, I don't know if anybody is aware, but Sammy and I we had a nice Travis Hunter ticket to win the uh, the Heisman <laughs> as well. So do I. We What'd you guys have get? It. We what all number? have it at different numbers. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna win the Heisman very quickly. I I, I need to bring this up. I know talk what I Jeff, talk to me. I, Jeff. I, I I don't. I get if you're a Boise State fan, you want Travis, you want Genty to win the Heisman. But there's this argument percolating on social media that Travis Hunter is up for this award because he plays more snaps than most people. <laughs> That's Guys, it. It's the only reason. He, he is top five at wide receiver <laughs> and cornerback. Like, I know he's not the best wide receiver, maybe not the best corner. He's fifth in the country about in receptions and receiving yards and number three in touchdowns while also being one of the best corners in the country. It's not like a thing where he's just mediocre one of the two, and he's propped up by just being able to play more reps. He's good at both of them. That's why he's the Heisman favorite. It's so silly. Like he's, he might be the number one pick in the draft if the team doesn't need a quarterback, and he gets to choose to play wide receiver or corner in the NFL. I think he should play wide receiver, by the way. But nonetheless, like – I just think it's the argument of more snaps. That's why he's the Heisman. It's not why he's the Heisman. And Genty, by the way, great season. I was looking at his numbers before this game, uh, before the show. They play Friday against Oregon State. Right now, DraftKings, they don't have an over-under market. They just have like a will he reach a certain yard market. The, the number right now is 180 yards plus at minus 115. <laughs> that's, a, that's a insane amount. <laughs> they didn't run for it this week on Friday. You brought it up. And I, and I know we I know were our, our rundown has uh, Auburn, Alabama in here next, but you brought up Boise State, and, and I'm curious your guys' takes on it because I remember a, a few years back when Stanford played Notre Dame in, a, in like a dead rubber game uh, that they didn't need to win, and, and Love was in the Heisman race, but he was hurt. And the game that they needed to win was the Pac-12 title game the following week uh, to get to the Rose Bowl or get, get potentially get to the playoff. And Love played against against Notre Dame, and he got re-aggravated an injury, and they wound up not winning the Pac-12 title that year, and it hurt them. Like Genty has been absolutely beat up the, the last couple of weeks. He left that game against Wyoming. He came back in. Clearly, they needed him, but. 
I'm really curious to see how Boise State plays this game because the game that they need is next week when UNLV comes to town on Friday night, assuming UNLV uh, beats Nevada. Like It's a very delicate balance that I think that that Boise State coaching staff and Ashton Genty have to decide this week. It's like We want to try and get him more Heisman votes. Maybe he still has a chance, even though I'm not sure he does. But at the same time, the game that they need is next week. So... If that total is 180 or something out there, I might play some under on that right now, guys. Yeah, competing interest. That's a very good point to bring up where on one you know, one hand, like you said, the, the big picture. On the other hand, you do want to get this kid every chance possible at the Heisman. Uh, but what you said reminds me of the uh, the Colorado Oak State game. I don't bet college player props a lot just because, man, there's just so many teams. So much. It's just once you go down that rabbit hole, it's just it's a whole nother like part time job. Uh, I would look at anything Hunter over touchdowns, receiving yards, because yeah. they're probably going to be up a lot. They can probably name their score. We saw them at the end of the Utah game. Feed him a touchdown just to stat to, to pat the stat. Dads, uh, pat pat the stats. I, I think we've been pat, doing. Pat, two, pat, you can, you can pat the stats too. You can do that. I think doing the NFL one before the college one. I think is just uh, <laughs> push my brain a little bit. But they're going to run it up. They're going to they're going to get him his numbers. So anything yeah. Hunter over, I think is probably a good look. Ladders, if they let you do the alternates, I, I think he's going to have a big day. I think I could help run. solve the Pam Pan debate. <laughs> and a, with a D, with a D, Pan. A, that's a great pull, Sammy. Um, the hard part about this week for some of these games, guys, is the motivation thing. Like Colorado, for example, I get your point, Will, and I, I'm with you in, in in sort of, but like, they don't have anything to play for. I know they're still in the Big 12 champ. I, I get it. They're like in if three other teams lose and this happens and the, the, the winning percentages and all this stuff. But it's a it's a Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern game, I think, right? So it's a 10 a.m. Yeah. Mountain Time kickoff. How motivated are they going to be for this game uh, as a team? I don't know. I mean, Travis Hunter might be motivated to win the Heisman, but like, how motivated is the rest of the team? Short, short week. I think they will be too. What do they need? Two of the three, right? These these scenarios are complicated, but yeah, you, like I Houston, they, Arizona, and Kansas. I think they need two I think of those. They need, they they need two everyone. and a half point dog. Arizona, who maybe Fafita and McMillan go nuts. Sure. And, yeah. and even, the, even the other game, like Houston, that Willie Fritz's defense. I don't. He's building a culture there. Like I, right. They need upsets. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. At all. Uh, what was you said last week? If if somebody said, "Yeah, well, we need Ole Miss and Bama to both lose," that's never going to happen. Right. Well, you know what? They both lost. It's it's college football. Um, and, you know, crazy things happen. True. I don't think Oklahoma State is beating Colorado though. Oh, I agree. Um, I mean, don't look now. The Pokes are zero and eight in conference play. I know they geez. don't have a quarterback. They don't have an offensive line. I still I look back at that game yeah. when we found out Rising wasn't going to play. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> we, the four of us, pounded, pounded Oklahoma State in that game, and you knew it was over in the second quarter. That was that was the worst day, only to be outdone later that night by the Baylor yes. meltdown. Yep, that was the same day, Oklahoma yeah. State, and then having Baylor against Colorado. Colorado with the Hail Mary. Clearly, nope. I've I've moved on with my life from that day. Um, <laughs> but I mean, look, Hunter could get sense. Hunter could get two touchdowns in this game, have a pick. They're yeah. facing a, a horrible offense. And honestly, guys, it might be better if Colorado wins this game, doesn't go to the conference title game. Hunter will win the Heisman. You, you will. You can get one one twenty plus at plus one fifty five right now on DraftKings. What's that receiving yards? Yeah, one twenty plus at plus one fifty five. It's not bad. I, uh, do you have? They have like a touchdown one because I'd look for like some. Man, they probably over, never give over you like, one and a half touchdowns or something. Yeah, like or even go up like uh, two six. two touchdowns is plus one sixty right now. Yeah, so they're they're kind of baking it in. I don't I don't yeah. know. If that's great. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, will Alabama? No, there's no way Alabama and Ole Miss are going to lose. Well, Alabama did lose, and good call. they were awful. Against Oklahoma, that was a uh, a good one for your boy here, which which was uh, needed. Uh, now you get uh, the Iron Bowl, and you are an 11.5-point favorite against an Auburn team that needs the win for bell eligibility. This Alabama team just does not look uh, anything like the team we saw in that first half against Georgia. Certainly not looking anything like the teams that we saw uh, under Nick Saban. Uh, you, you go back from 2008, Nick's second year, until two, to, to, to last year. They were 119 and one against unranked teams. This year, they've lost two games, two two out of seven. 
Uh, if they were to pull uh, lose here, uh, they'd be four and four in SEC play. And you go back in that same time frame, they they won eighty eight percent of their SEC games and lost sixteen games. They could lose four uh, potentially this year. It, it just looks like a team that they really are undecided at running back, uh, wide receivers out, out, outside of the the kid who's seventeen. We just got to call him the kid who's seventeen. Yes, forever. Ryan for, Yeah, exactly. He's outside of the 17-year-old. I saw a funny tweet that said he's the first 17-year-old to lose as a ranked opponent to two unranked teams in a season. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good tweet. Yeah, it was a good it's very good. It just seems like they're just really relying on Milrow to do everything. Uh, and it showed. He made a couple of the worst possible throws that you could have made last week in that game against Oklahoma that were picked off. Uh, that being said, they are still in the college football playoff race. They are, I don't even know what these, I don't even look at these rankings to, uh, or have them memorized like I used to. They are 13 right now. They are uh, the first team on the outside looking in. You got that triumvirate of Alabama, Ole Miss, South Carolina, which I think is probably the right order, being that they both did beat. Uh, South Carolina and need some things to happen here, but we saw that Auburn defense kind of get carved up uh, in the second half by AM with Marcel Reed. Don't, don't you think Milrow could kind of do some similar things here after all the, the negativity swirling and the terrible performance last week? Uh, there still is a high, very, very high ceiling there uh, with what, with what we saw uh, at home against Georgia earlier in the year. The fact that this game is at home, uh, I would lay it here with Alabama if you had to play this game. True we've seen much worse. Me. Oops, sorry. Well, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say we've seen much worse Auburn teams play competitively with yep. much better Bama teams. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if Auburn kept it close. Uh, I would take the points, haven't bet it. I do think, and people aren't gonna like this. Bama uh -oh. at forty to one to win the national title. Are we sure they're <laughs> leaving them out? Are we sure they're leaving them out? If it, they're, let's they're just say winning. it comes down to. Well, it's just, I mean, it's more of a bet on them to get in the playoff, and you're just happy you have the 40 to 1 and you go from there. So maybe you take the whatever, 2 to 1, it's a little over 2 to 1, depending on where you shop, to uh, to get in the playoff. Or let's just say it comes down to, and look, Tennessee could lose, Notre Dame could lose, things can happen. But if it came down to SMU with two losses, Bama with three losses for one spot, who are they putting in? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what will happen because they've kind of said that they're not going to penalize teams for losing a conference title game. Correct. But at the same time, like, Ultimately, doesn't it come down to like who do you think is better? Do you who do you think is better, SMU or Alabama? Like, be interesting. Brand name matters. I would think it does. That's not really a debate, though, right? Who's better, right. Bama or SMU? It's not. Not in, my, not in my opinion. No, it's not a debate. But three losses should have weight. And look, I think nuclear option. What happens if Georgia loses in the SEC championship? Oh, they're in. They're in. Well, they're in. right. But they'll have three losses, and one of those losses is to Alabama. They're like, in. Both they, of them? They, although George is absolutely in. Well, oh. what if what if Georgia wins and Bama beat the SEC champs? That's the other flip of it. Well, I'll, or get in the playoff. It's all I worry about. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's, just, you're just, just sitting there lounging back that. Or he's just flaunting that just, 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 just checked out. We're the one of the five. We're, we're the one of the five seed. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. Um, that's just interesting, right? Because look, South Carolina, who we were talking on on the chat, and the, the odds have changed so much now, Will. Because when you look around the landscape, you know, if they win this weekend and beat Clemson, I can't believe Will the, passed on that good number. He's nice, talking nice. it up, and then he just decided not to bet it. And they're still they're still not getting the playoff. When you look at, I mean, they've lost to yeah, three teams that'll be ahead of them, right? So. Um, they're not going to get in, and, and yeah, so it's Georgia. Um, I mean, look, okay, talk about not punishing the the loser of a, of a championship game. If if A and M has four losses, they're not in this. They're not in as a championship loser. Like they're yeah. also not in now. By the way, that's fair to note. Like they're no, not, they're not, not in in now. So I, I think it's Bama to win the championship. I don't know, but the Bama to be in. If they win this weekend, probably in, right? Four Big Ten teams. Indiana's in. Um, one Big 12 team. One G5. 
Two what if they got an upset? If Vandy lose, who's who, like who takes Vandy's spot? If Notre Dame loses, can Notre Dame afford, afford a lot? I guess it'd be no, a fun exercise, seasons, right? Because I, I don't think Notre Dame, I don't think Notre yeah, Dame is okay. going to lose. But if they do lose, they're out. They're not in the playoff. Agree to USC. I would tend to agree, but not as confidently. So who's like right now as we're recording this on Wednesday? Who is in no matter what? How, how many? How long is that list? Uh, it's Ohio the four State, big, the four Ohio big State, ten teams. Oregon, Tech, you sure? You sure? You sure about Indiana? You sure? Yes. They're like, what are I they am. right now? Seven, eight, ten. They're, the, they're, they're ten. ten. Only, but they're only in because every SEC team needed to win, lost, right? Sure, yeah. but, lost, but, Ole Miss lost. But who's gonna jump? Are they gonna be? Are they gonna be jumped by a two-loss SMU? I, 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 I don't. don't so so no. I think India. I think they're in. I think that Georgia's in. Texas is in. And then you know one ACC team. I mean, Miami's right. not guaranteed to be in if they they can't finish this out. I agree. And well, Boise's. What if Indiana loses? I, you know, Tim Brando said Purdue is a program on uh, the rise. What if, what if Indiana loses? I, to Purdue? I know. I, I've laid the twenty nine. I'd be, I'd be okay with, uh, with Indiana minus twenty nine this weekend. So, the, yeah, the, I think the they're going to be worst, fine. The worst thing, <laughs> the worst thing anyone who thought Indiana was a top twelve team could have done was watch them against Michigan and Ohio State when they impossible to run the ball, could barely get a first down. Now we've seen the, the committee. Value is one loss record, and that's why they're they're ten and one and still in there. I ultimately do think they are going to get in, but uh, I'd be very curious to see who their their first round matchup would be against. Uh, speaking of a team that we just mentioned, uh, Will uh, Tennessee laying eleven uh, at Vandy. We've seen Vandy seven and one this year as a dog. Won a bunch of those games outright. Uh, surely Tennessee isn't going to go on the road here to uh, uh, Diego Pavia and the boys and uh, go to Nashville and lose, are they? I would take the points. I, I look. Uh, they, they've had just an incredible season of covering these numbers, pulling outright upsets. They play keep away. They they move the ball. They you know they they move the clock. They they eat so much time, which is always a good thing when you're getting double digits to to burn that clock. I wouldn't see. I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee, who has not played great offensively in, in SEC play, uh, they got a little tight. Hypo got a little tight. It's a rivalry game. Uh, I think Vandy plus eleven is very, very live here, Sammy. Vandy's taking money, no doubt about it. Open twelve and a half. There's a ten and a half in Vegas. DraftKings eleven, offshore a lot of ten and a half. So the market supports what Will's saying. Vanderbilt has made people money as a dog all year. It makes sense. I I lean to the doors. I do. Um, I haven't bet it yet though. Um, I'll just say this. Every person we fade will have Vanderbilt plus the points this weekend. I, it doesn't mean they're right or wrong, but that's just what's going to be the case, right? Everyone's going to bet Vanderbilt. Everyone's going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to bet Tennessee, but just, just an FYI that people that we think suck at gambling, that we know that we fade, are going to be just, on Vanderbilt this weekend. because you say Sammy and Will suck at gambling. Yeah, that was, basically, that was that's, what I heard. that's unbelievable. And I wore this hat for you. That's yeah, what, yeah. That's well, I, I, I don't fade you guys, unfortunately. I probably should fade the FCS picks, but I haven't done that quite. Oh, what, oh, last week? <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about? Did, oh, wait, did it win? It did outright? win? It did win? He did say they win. They, they won outright. outright. <laughs> Four point dog. I forgot about that game. They did Let's, win. Well, I like I, Washington on the money line this week. <laughs> right, exactly. Please, three, straight, do that. three straight wins for the, for, the, for the dogs in that rivalry. <laughs> Two is a double digit underdog. Make it three in a row. Did oh, you Ohio know State minus good. 150, Big Ten, best bet. <laughs> God, Oregon's number one. They're in the playoff, and he's just they, he thinks they're like I, I forgot. Oh, uh, South God, you are that so game, right? cocky and arrogant now. Well, Sammy yeah. texted us in the middle of that game, acting <laughs> like they were going to lose. I thought they lost. They scored Sorry. a touchdown with 12 seconds to go. All right, it was oh, never in doubt. Go. Okay, there right. we go. Hey man, never in doubt. It's all that matters. You know the I'm, FCS I'm picks are actually up this year, right? Like they I, yes, yes I know, relevant. Sammy. I know. I know. I'm I'm aware. Yes. Uh huh. Under 48 and a half, probably the way I would go here. You get Vandy with those kind of long time consuming drives. Like as you mentioned, Tennessee's offense, not necessarily great. Probably a lot of Dylan Sampson as well. Uh, I, I'd, I'd look at under 48 and a half would be my uh, my play here. And then we talk, just mentioned South Carolina uh, behind the third in that pecking order behind Ole Miss, behind Alabama. Sure, you can argue that they probably are playing better now uh, than any, either of those other two teams, but Sellers did play against Ole Miss earlier in the year, and they lost, what, 27-3. It was never a game. Now they're a short underdog, uh, minus uh, getting two and a half in Death Valley. Uh, Jeff, not to 
steal your line, steal your thunder. Every one of the people who we think suck at gambling are going to have South Carolina yeah. plus half this week, yeah. including Will. So uh, out here, Will actually has his <laughs> life savings. He, his Will's kids, their college tuition is on the cocks this weekend. Why so. is there no Why is there no Santa Claus at the Hell household? Because because Daddy bet on South Carolina at eighty to one to make the playoff. Go you ahead, guys Will. Ha- you guys have a lot of balls for people that don't and people that don't know because we haven't talked about it on the show. It was within our text thread. I think last Tuesday, so whatever, a week ago, eight days ago, I sent out a, just the thought: Hey, South Carolina, which we don't have in Connecticut, and I, otherwise I would have bet South Carolina. Some places where you could bet it was like. 70 to 1 to make the playoffs and just shot down. No chance. No chance. How do they possibly get in? And then you blink and they're like 2 to 1 to get in, plus 250 or whatever. <laughs> I still don't think they're getting in. Of course, I would love to have the 70 to 1 in my pocket. If nothing else, I could yeah. uh, I could orbit. But I just want that on the record for these three gentlemen. I want it on their permanent record. Duly noted. It's it's on the record that you like you like the Gamecocks this weekend to win. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. What, what's Clemson's I played? I don't think Clemson's nobody. played good, though. I don't think they are either. I don't think they are either. Clemson in with a win. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, I mean, does it? Ha- does it's it another brand name. Oh. Does it depend on what happens in the ACC championship game? Like if SMU, if it's a close game, if None of them a, if SMU and Miami play a three point game, are they in, both those teams in over Clemson, or is Clemson jumping over SMU for that spot? Like two losses would be to Georgia. They did get smoked at home by Louisville. I mean, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, again, this is what makes these last couple of weeks fun. We just we have way more questions than answers. That last week was just a disaster. I mean, it really was. No, it was a disaster for a lot of the teams, committee. It was, it was fun for us for uh, sure. being able to uh, to talk about it. And then you got the other. Uh, Sammy, did you have anything on the uh, the Cox and Tigers? I did move South Carolina up in the ratings. I moved them ahead of Florida, Auburn, Colorado. Not not ahead of Oklahoma, but also ahead of LSU. So I am finally be. catching on there, Will. Um, I'll be pulling for you. Joking aside, where is their defense rank like in the country? South Carolina's defense, top five, top two, I was three. Like, say they're really good. Top ten, top ten yeah. is very, very they're, fair. They're yeah, havoc. They're uh, havoc uh, rate is eleventh yeah, right yeah, now. Thir- yeah. Thirteenth in yards per game, eighth in yards per play. Yeah. And, you know, you know who's yeah. they're eighth in yards per play. You know who's tenth in yards per play on defense? Oregon. Wow. They're better than Oregon. Wow. And you got to adjust for schedule with that stuff too. I do think they're really good. Yeah. I actually, uh, I have under nine and a half Clemson, so I'm not touching this game. I I do think Clem- I do think South Carolina is better. I think offense will be hard to come by just because I don't know how much like explosiveness Clemson has. Uh, I think. Clemson's offensive line could be a little bit vulnerable, so it should be a good game. I mean, I'm I'm excited for this one. Well, you need a good defense to stop a good offense, and South Carolina certainly has that. And look, guys, this is a market on a Wednesday that is just under three, and it's starting to move. Like, Chris Offshore is at two. Very sharp book. So there's a reason. There's a financial reason why this line isn't three. It's two and a half. Some books have two. I think South Carolina is better. I do. I think South Carolina is a better team than Clemson. Does it mean I'd bet South Carolina this week? No, but I I, I think they're. I don't think Clemson's very good defensively. They're nowhere near as good a team uh, that they were. I know Klubnik has been playing better, but they should have lost to Pitt a couple weeks ago. Game's over. Yep. Pitt, Pitt gave it away. So, uh, it would be it would be South Carolina or pass for me. I just don't know ultimately. Uh, if if I can get there, big one at the dome in Syracuse, Miami. What are we looking at here? Ten and a half, eleven. Is that where we do we have we hit eleven? Yeah, uh, we're at eleven at a couple places. Yeah, we're we're at eleven a couple places. High total sixty seven and a half. Uh, I believe we got what with the top two uh, quarterbacks in terms of yards per game but with uh, Cam Ward and Colin McCord. I don't know. I, I, it feels like again. Syracuse is going to be a very popular underdog here, getting 10 and a half or 11 points. Uh, people, I mean, look, Miami has been in a fourth quarter game every week the last seven weeks, with the exception against the, the worst Florida State team in school history. Like, if you go down 
and and look at Miami their last seven games. It was twenty to fourteen last week against Wake, six point lead. Uh, Georgia Tech they were down twelve and wind up losing. Duke they led by a point before ultimately pulling away. Florida State game I mentioned Louisville was tied. They were down twenty in the fourth against Cal. Uh, Virginia Tech they were down ten before they had the the ridiculous finish uh, to wind up winning that game. Every single one of these games with Miami is a game. Uh, will the bubble ultimately burst Saturday or in the ACC championship game? Uh, I am. I can't get involved here. Uh, it would be. It would be Syracuse or pass for me if um, I had to play it on one of those little pool sheets, just because of the lack of um, any any real conviction about how good Miami is, and the fact that it doesn't matter. Who the opponent is. It's a game. It's a four quarter game every week, even though ultimately against Duke and Wake Forest, Miami did wind up pulling away uh, late in the fourth quarter. Any uh, any thoughts here? Uh, Miami, Syracuse, Will? Gonna dream? Are you, you going to drive over to the Dome on Saturday? Check it out? No, not if you're not coming. I'm, I mean, you. you no, one of these I'm going to be in Columbus. I'm going to be in Columbus. So I'm call sick one of these weeks so we can hang. Maybe check that you can get you <laughs> something. Uh, I'm just going to throw this up. I like, I like the dog. I like Syracuse. I think. Look, last team with the ball kind of game. I don't trust Cristobal in these spots. Big favorite. Miami has uh, – look, I thought that was a misleading final. Miami has not looked good. Just going to throw out there a Vandy, uh, Syracuse, Moneyline parlay is like 16 to 1. DraftKings is doing this boost where if you use a, a four-team parlay, they like double your odds. So you throw in Arizona, you throw in Nebraska, that gets you to a cool 142 to 1 again. I'm talking like uh, pizza bet with a boost. Ooh. If you, I don't know. Some of these dogs are live. And if, again, if you tried one of these last They're week. Gonna, some are going to win. It's a, you add, why don't Great you add Washington in there? Add, yeah. uh, add the Huskies add, in there. What is that? <laughs> alternate line on Washington. Absolutely. Great, great, great cash out opportunity for you there, too, Will. Great cash out opportunity. <laughs> uh, I, like, dogs I like the dog. Yeah, last team with the ball. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the total is high, but I could easily see this being like a, a 38 35 type of game. I think it's a close game, high scoring game here, Sammy. You don't want to know what my total is in this game. I do. Yeah, we, we do. 72. 77. Wow. wow. It's probably a little high. I mean, looking at the market. <laughs> but you're probably a little higher. It's probably a little high. Usually when you have a 10 point gap in your numbers to the market, you're you're doing something wrong, not the market. But man, would it surprise anybody if this was 45 31? Wouldn't surprise no. me one bit. No, no. Are we sleeping on Notre Dame a little bit here? No. I mean, I I, I know what would you say? No? No. Yes. The, no. They are, they are what they are. I don't think that's anything that. What, what what are we sleeping on? They're not winning a championship. Jeff is feisty. Well, I, I, My I, goodness, I don't. I don't. I've never seen this version well, of Jeff. He's ornery. I'm at home. I'm just relaxed. Um, no, it's that jersey. Turns it's that you jersey. Into a it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, a no, jersey I just Jeff. everyone keeps. This is a comment. Not that everyone has said this. Like, oh, we sleep on Notre Dame. What does that even mean? They're they're a top five team. They're beating the you know bad football teams by a lot of points. Yep. And they're going to probably beat USC by a lot of points because USC's not very good. Uh, I like the angle of taking teams off rivalry weekend. We know some teams had it last weekend. I mean, USC made a bowl. They're feeling good about themselves. Here comes Notre Dame, needs to win to continue to keep their playoff, uh, you know, their playoff hopes alive. And um, but they're not a legitimate contender. We do this all the time with Notre Dame. We're like, oh, that's what I, oh, that's oh, what oh, I Notre mean. Dame. Like, Notre Dame, Dame. and then they Alabama they by four scores. In the, in the it's got the game. highest average in-game win probability of any team in the country. The schedule has been horseshit. Seventy-eighth uh, strength of record is not very strong. It's tenth. So like, even the fact that they're ten and one, it's kind of like basically they're saying anyone who has faced the schedule. Uh, would would be ten and one. Uh, they could have zero ranked wins at the end of the week uh, with A and M and Army. Like, like I'm, I I don't think they're a national title contender, but uh, I, I think they they think that some people I think out there uh, just because of the, the way they have been blowing people out uh, with the best scoring margin in the country over over a recent span and. Uh, I, I just bring it out there because I get told I'm a Notre Dame hater all the time. You got yelled at by Jeff, too. You're, you're catching it from both ends. I will say they have not played a road game since mid-September against Purdue, so that is something to keep in mind here. I, I would lean towards taking the points, but not dying to bet USC here. Wait, Sammy. is that really? What's I didn't that? know they hadn't played on the road that long. I don't think so because they're a playing true, a lot of these. A true road game. A true road game, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, they, played, they played Army and met life, right? USC right. hasn't left home in a month either. They've been they've been on the West Coast for a while now. Which um, would mean it's a good spot for for USC in theory. Yeah, but 
how many people are showing up to the Coliseum? Like, there, there's no home field advantage in in this game. Um, I'm I, what I'm hoping, guys, is that, and we see this happen Earth a lot Quake. in these games. Just go ahead and say it. You're pissing everybody else off today. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this number get gets for to... earthquake and cancellation at the game at the Coliseum. I heard that's what I heard. I'm hoping this number gets to seven or six and a half by kickoff, and I'll take Notre Dame. I, I'm I'm hoping that people are like you guys coming on USC. I got better number in Notre Dame, Sammy. So I texted the biggest USC fan I know, and he says 42-14, ND. <laughs> that's, that's where Trojans fans are right now. <laughs> I, I usually take those with a grain of salt because he's so defeated that he's probably a little subtracted from reality. Notre Dame has been scoring, though. God, I mean, 49 against Stanford, 31 yep. on Tech, 51 on Navy, 52 on Florida State, 35 on Virginia, 47 on Army. 49 on Army. Now, USC has better athletes than all of those teams. We know that. We understand that. Maybe similar to Florida State. I mean, this total, they've been going over totals by themselves. This kind of feels a little low at 51, 51 and a half. But I, I'm worried about USC like showing up, playing good defense, and this final score being 27-14, and I'm not going to get home on the over. So... I'll probably pass, but I do lean over. I, I think Love. I think Love could have a big game running. I, I look at a player prop on his rushing total. I, I don't have it up here. I don't know what it is, but I, I would consider uh, he, he's a really good back. And if the if that SC defense decides not to show up, he could have a a, a monster game here. So it's interesting though. You, you talk about the points. This has been one of those rivalries where you really have not had a ton of upsets. You got to back got to go back to 2011, the last time an underdog went out right. Wow. So, well, you, usually the better team does win and uh the best team in the Big 12 maybe right now is Kansas. Yeah. Uh, after the, uh, the the Grim Reaper tour uh, knocked off Colorado, Iowa State, uh, and BYU in succession. Uh, I mean, now we have the Big 12 coming down to the wire and we with you got uh, a bunch of different possibilities here. Uh, Arizona State laying nine at Arizona. Uh, Iowa State, a two-and-a-half-point home favorite against K-State. Uh, BYU right now a 13-point favorite against Houston. And really, a- anyone's guess is, is as good as mine as to ultimately how this thing is going to play out. I-, I don't think we're getting all three of those favorites winning out, right? I mean, like we talked about it earlier. Like there- There's a chance... Fafita and McMillan just go nuts after having a terrible season and, and get up for the rivalry game and, and maybe pull an upset. Uh, Iowa State, certainly at home. Kansas State, I think people thought might have been the most talented team in the league entering the year. Uh, kind of been disappointing as well. Would not shock me to see them go to Ames as one as a small dog. I know a lot of people who I respect are on who uh, took three uh, with, with K-State. And then Willie Fritz and Houston, they're kind of building an, an identity there. Uh, I like Houston. I like them plus the 13. I think their defense is great. And if you have the luxury, if you have the luxury of waiting on BYU, like if it falls into a place where like if they need a win to get in, you're probably going to get 14 north of 14, uh, just because I'm sure everyone's going to be betting BYU thinking they're going to blow out Houston. So uh, I, I'd be careful of, of those three games. Uh, the thing I feel mo- best about would be taking Houston plus 13. And if you want to wait and, and see if you can get a better number than that, uh, go for it. Uh, any thoughts on how this uh, Big 12 race ultimately shakes out here? Any thoughts on these games? Wouldn't be shocked if we got a little uh, a little drama. And if you're Colorado, hey, when we talk about motivation with them, you win Friday and then you kick your feet back and you put the pressure on the other teams and maybe you get, uh, maybe you get the ball to bounce your way and a couple of these upsets to happen. So I wouldn't be surprised. I agree of all the teams right now in that conference, Kansas is playing the best. They demolished uh, Colorado and not, not to go back to the Hunter Heisman debate, but man, he's on a defense. That guy <laughs> couldn't get off the field once. I mean, Kansas just went up and down the field on them. They could not get a stop. Little. Never, never once, never even close to it. Dion punts fourth and sixth. Like, man, you're not going to get the ball back. You can't stop him. So uh, Kansas is playing really well right now. Kansas could be, if you think about where they are in the standings and where they could be, um, you know, five and six, they could easily be eight and three right now, if not better. All six games they lost happened in the fourth quarter. They had a lead. So that's just, 
it's it's nickels and dimes, right? You're right there, and then you can't finish at the end. So yeah, I, I've we talked about it last week. Kansas, Auburn, Florida play to a higher rating than their their record. That's just the reality. Um, I can get with you on Houston Bear. I could, I mean, you could get a thirteen and a half right now. I would love fourteen, right. obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't have many Big Twelve thoughts. The only thing I wanted to roll over from the weekend was my favorite moment, and you guys probably all saw this when Scadabo scored the touchdown. And then ran into the end zone and signed the autograph. Dillingham was yeah. ready to murder him. Like, did you? <laughs> Dillingham was so mad because Scatterbo scores and then takes out a marker and sign. Like, <laughs> Dillingham. I thought Dillingham was going to explode when that happened. It was very funny. Type of stuff that they would do up in Oregon. I'll be he was it. he was very angry about the officiating. The, the officials the officials were, were were right. There was a second left in that clock. Um, I think Arizona State kicks Arizona's butt. I, I know that it's a rivalry game, and I get it. It's a rivalry. Anything happens a rivalry game. Are we sure Arizona's not very good? They can't play any defense. There's rumors about about coaches there uh, and how long they're going to be there. And and last year Arizona oh, Arizona yeah I know I've I've heard those uh, yeah those state yeah. rumors. And and um, Arizona mm-hmm. ramped the score last weekend on Ari- last year on Arizona State. Uh, I think the favors returned here. Uh, nine points on the road. I get it. Rivalry game, and people might be against doing that in this moment. But again, I mean, I could walk you through Arizona's schedule. I mean, we thought Arizona, or at least I did not bear because Barham is a best bet under. I mean, they've lost six or last seven games by six by. Three touchdowns by four touchdowns by five, 56 to 12. They lost a game. Lost mm. last weekend at TCU 49 28. Their defense right now is 102nd in the country in points per drive. Their offense, by the way, not much better, 101 in points per drive. So uh, I, I just think Arizona is not a good football team. Arizona is playing good football now. I'll take the Sun Devils in this one. How, how about this, Jeff? That, I mean, the, the win total is long since done. I had a head to head win total bet. Arizona versus Kansas. Kansas could go <laughs> wow. five and seven, and I might win that bet. Wow. How about that wow. shit? That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Arizona is they've won one, they've won two conference games at Utah, when I think Rising got hurt in that game. And they beat Houston, who, you know, Houston is uh on the given week, sort of up and down, right? So right. that's it. So I like the Sun Devils cover the nine here. Anything could happen in a rivalry game, except probably Michigan winning this week. Uh, in the game in Columbus, which is our uh, Super 6 presented by DraftKings game of the week. Uh, question, obviously, uh, going to be what will the result be of the Ohio State-Michigan team? I should say Michigan-Ohio State. I should be proper uh, and, and go alphabetical. But I'll go European soccer style to Ohio State home team first. Um, big, big favorite here. I don't think this game is going to be very close. I know Michigan got kind of right last week and put up a big number on Northwestern, but if you look at Ohio State's defense right now, since all that talk about Oregon and the scheme and not really getting after rushing the passer, uh, Ryan Day and Jim Knowles have kind of, I don't want to say put uh, Larry Johnson in like the corner and said timeout, this is how we're doing things, but uh, they have clearly – uh, had a schematic change since then. Uh, since the loss to Oregon, they have not allowed a touchdown pass in five games. They have 18 sacks, mm. and in 15 red zone trips, have allowed just four touchdowns. So I do not think uh, this game is close. Uh, whether Ohio State pulls people uh, in, in advance of the Big Ten championship game to avoid people getting hurt will remain to be seen after they have lost a few in a row. I'm sure they want to put up a big number. The Ohio State team that we saw last week was extremely motivated uh, by a lot of the talk about Indiana and the emerging superpower and you know, Indiana uh, to all the talk about how good they are. And I know there were from someone inside the uh, Ohio State program was like, yeah, we, we're we're pretty good too. And uh, they went out and proved it. And I think they're going to go out and prove it again against a really bad Michigan offense. Not sure if Will Johnson's going to play on the defensive side of the ball either. I am completely ignoring uh, the 50 point outlier against Northwestern last week. I think this game is an absolute blowout. So uh, that's going to be my uh, my answer to the uh, the question in that column that we got coming up. I think it's a big Ohio State win. Uh, Sammy, you agree with me or disagree? 
I think blowout. I do. I'm also looking at this total 43 at DraftKings. That seems so low. Ohio, Ohio State, Ohio State game. I, this I mean, has I been an over this... game too the last 10 years or so. You Dude, think that this it... game is a big Big Ten game? They under Smash Mouth football. Been a lot of overs. No, I. I mean, not that I. Not that this is why I like it, but because yeah. that's <laughs> what influencers do. I don't do. Sammy that likes the Sammy likes the trends. Look at look at the final scores though, guys. 30 24, 45 23, 42 27, 56 27, 62 39, 31 20, 30 27, 42 13. I'm back in 2015 already. I mean uh we have uh 10 straight overs. Wow. I, 43. Ohio State could get 43 by themselves. They might need to, though. That's the problem. So then we should just lay 20 and a half. Yes. Yes. Okay. Or All Michigan right. team total under. And it's it's baked in because it's nine and a half. Nine and a half is super low. You could go, I mean, you could pick your number, pick your juice. Ten and a half is minus 140. I was up like an un, like an alternate under, like, hey, can I bet like it five to one odds them to be shut out? Something crazy <laughs> like that. You can get plus one eighty. They don't score a touchdown under 0.5 touchdowns for Michigan. I don't know. I mean but one thing, if you're Michigan, the, the only hope of keeping this game close, can your defensive line just like wreck the game and cause turnovers, not let Ohio State run the ball? I did think before the game got out of, out of hand, Indiana did a good job stopping the run. I didn't think Ohio State with that new offensive line really ran the ball effectively for most of the game. But Ohio State, I mean, they've had revenge on their mind for a long time. They're much better. I think they will beat Michigan while they're down. So I'd only look towards laying it in a Michigan team total under. I also I want to give quickly my coward of the week if I can. This is a brand new segment that might oh. never surface again. We, we, Michigan, we, we, I think it's all good sales on this for next year. My coward, coward, of the week. coward of the week, Michigan Northwestern last Saturday. Michigan's up ten to three. Northwestern has the ball fourth and two at the five in Ann Arbor. You, you go for it. Take right? the points. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they kicked. A 25-yard field goal. It worked out go great. Go down 10 to six and never scored again. Yeah, it turned out huge. great. Huge bear, huge field goal by Northwestern to cut oh. it from 10-3 to 10-6 and Literally. then lose 50 to six. From a marketing that's, standpoint, that's... it it can't be coward of the week. It's got to be chicken of the week so we can sponsor it with one like you know a fast food place. Or something. Chicken, so we gotta chicken of the week. Yeah, done. By, by the way, that that is a bigger coward award than uh, I was going to nominate PJ Fleck for, for oh, kicking. Oh, the so goal. bad! Oh. Kicking the field goal down four, fourth and goal. It was fourth <laughs> the goal, the seven or the eight. Yeah, down four with about. Might have been minutes. closer. I thought it was like I'm four kicking the, five. the field goal, baby. I'm going to cut it to a one point game in in a shocking fashion. They never saw the ball again the rest of the play. But hey, give Jimmy Franklin uh, a lot of credit. That fake punt was a uh, a yeah. great call. That was awesome. We're going to have a fake punt, the same fake punt that Oregon ran a couple weeks ago. Now it's been shown around college football. Oregon, weeks. here we go. Here we go again. This Oregon. A co copycat league. Uh, Ohio State's going to win this game by whatever number they would like to win this game by. Um, whether or not they pull starters better. This is a interesting part about this weekend, right? Because uh, with the college football playoff being a 12 team, you sort of know if you're in or out. And if you have some guys beat up, you got some guys a little, a little hurt. Uh, is it worth it to. Sit them out a little bit, and maybe the score is not as high as you think because you got to get those guys ready to play Oregon in a couple of weeks. And look, I know we'll debate plenty uh, for plenty of weeks. We'll, we'll have this debate, but having the buy is preferable to being the five seed. I, I get the yes. matchups right now that yes. the five seed has an easy matchup in, in round result. one and quarterfinals. I get that, but the buy is so important to rest and recovery that you have to scheme around being able to do that. So if you're Oregon and you're Ohio State this weekend, you're playing your rivals who you have to beat, right? You've lost three times in a row, both teams, to your rivals. You need to beat them, but you also have to make sure you're healthy to play each other in two weeks and also healthy for a playoff run. You mentioned Oregon, Jeff, laying a big number against uh, the Huskies. Yeah. Beating them a couple times the last few years as a double-digit dog. We don't, kidding aside, we don't expect mm -hmm. that to happen. But you look at Oregon, we mentioned it with Ohio State, you mentioned with Oregon. How do they approach uh, this game? Because yeah. it's kind of been, uh, we, we hit on it leading up to that Wisconsin game, like Oregon that kind of on fumes was their eighth straight game. All the signs were there. Yeah for a close game, but for the most part, Oregon has been a team this year 
where it's kind of been sleepy second halves. And Dan Lanning, I think, has done a really good job of like managing workload yeah. uh, in anticipation of these games later in the year. Like it would not surprise me at all to, to, to see Washington cover this game because I, I think it's probably similar. Get ahead. Get get distance yeah. and kind of make sure nobody gets hurt ahead of the game that you really need to win next week. Uh, I would look to second half under. I don't know if I'd wager on it now, uh, but they they don't score in the third quarter. They haven't had, they haven't done that all all season. Um, and if they can get up in this game by 14, 17 points in the first half, um, I don't think they try in the second half. I, that's it's kind of that simple in this game. So I would look to a, a second half wager at some point at halftime or, or before halftime. Uh, that's the way I think this, this game plays out. It would not surprise me if this game was 28-17. Like, just get a win. You beat your rival. Uh, Tez Johnson may be back. Birch is back. Like just Get some of your guys on the field. Get, get some reps. And then um, get ready to play Ohio State. I'm not sure how the rules work, but if Oregon wins this game, do we cash our futures from last year, Oregon, to win the Pac-12 yes. and Bo Nix to win the title? Yes. Does that? I don't know how that works. Yeah, yeah. Actually, does, Oregon, yeah. Pac- Oregon to Oregon, right. yes, yeah. Oregon to win the Pac-12. Okay, good. Does cash? Yes. I'm glad I kept those. Yeah. Uh, just in case you were wondering, Bear, Washington is seven and one on the money line. That was. Mean. I'm not. I'm not betting against my friend Jeff. Someone, with that jersey. Someone, someone has to be nice on this on this call. They're they're this this also to they're 0 for five on the road this year, and they're 0 for five against the spread on the road is Washington. They've been a bad road team this season. I want I want to prop up will the Washington kicker miss a field goal. Yeah. Not against us. He makes all those field goals against us. So <laughs> don't worry about that. Yeah. Similar th- similar thought, similar situation uh in the SEC with Georgia now. How pissed must Kirby Smart be behind the scenes? Like it, <laughs> he, he cannot be happy that he's got to play in this game now with all the injuries that they've had. You, you could have been looking at like three, uh, three week, two weeks off, three weeks off, and you're going to get either the Group of Five team or a Big Twelve champion uh, on your home field, and then you're going to play probably the, the, the Group of Five or the the Big Twelve in the in in the second round. Like, look, I know rest matters, but. Now the fact that Georgia's in the SEC title game, you got to win it or, or else kind of like you're doubly screwed for having just the week rest after that. They're a massive favorite against Georgia Tech. Don't know what we're going to see from Haynes King. Uh, like that was the part. I'm so pissed that last week I didn't catch on to Georgia UMass earlier because that was the ultimate like they couldn't care one bit week after the big win against Tennessee. 40 or whatever the hell that number was, way too many. So bad job by me not capitalizing on that early. I know you jumped in live. Did you win that or I Yeah, they cut they 38 and, and a half. Yeah, they okay. won by 38. So the, fortunately I got I got a good number and, and wound up winning. But anyone want to take uh Georgia Tech plus uh, 19 F? Jackets have been very good yeah. as a big underdog in recent years. I don't know if they win the game. I like them. Like they, they're a they're a pain in the you know what to get off the field with a lot of quarterback runs. Uh, yes, Matt couldn't do it. So it might be a short type game where Georgia yep. might not have a whole lot of the ball. That's my handicap. A dog that can run the ball, keep the ball, eat the clock, similar to Vandy. Uh, I, I like Georgia Tech, and that was the same night. Georgia Tech NC State was last Thursday night, right? And everyone was watching Steelers Browns in the snow. Great game. The Georgia Tech NC State game was wild too, which I don't know if as many people watch it because it was going up against the NFL, which I, I miss. I mean, we're all old enough to remember when there was no NFL game on Thursday. It was just like a college game. We'd all watch, you know, an ACC game. So it does take away from it a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Bear. I think that's too many points. I do not have a thought on this, but I do have FCS. Do we want it or not? Yes. Ooh, we have yes. playoffs. This one actually isn't a playoff game. This is a regular season game on Friday. Okay. So it's oh, Alabama A&M, 309 33 <laughs> And there, there is a market right now. DraftKings has lines up right now on FCS. They have lines for all the playoff games. Uh, the other one that almost made the cut was Illinois State, minus three. But he likes the points. He's taking six with Alabama A and M, three oh nine zero three three. Have at it. I'm going to my DraftKings two x two DraftKings version of uh, looking for this, Sammy. What what rotation number was it? Three oh nine zero three three. Friday zero three three. Yep, there Alabama we go. Alabama A and M getting six at, F- at FAMU. Alabama A and M right here. It's live. You can bet it right now. Oh God! Oh, we're in. 
We're in. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to pick this. I'm gonna. Have to oh, it, it limited me. Oh. Wait to what? Uh, I, I mean, okay, I can. I 128 dollars. Too sharp, Jeff. Better than some books would give you. I know, right? Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to see it. Yeah. All right, I, I'll do that. 128 dollars on on A and M there, Alabama A and M. Let's go. No, 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 no better way to end. Uh... The Thanksgiving weekend, though, with a little Friday uh, Alabama A&M FAMU action. Good luck uh, with all of our wagers, especially that one, because I know if that one loses, Sammy, uh, we're going to hear about it. Nerd. Exactly. <laughs> Look at you, nerd. Take care, bud. All right, Bear. I took off my Oregon hockey sweater, so I, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to calm down the, uh, the barbs here and the rhetoric, and we're going to talk about – my fate of the week, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't resist. Bear, one more time this season, we're fading the UCLA Bruins. <laughs> we need, we right. need him to win, though, Jeff. We need you do. Win. I don't. I hit my my win total last week. Yeah. Um, so you see, yeah, yeah, there we go. Continuing the whole we we don't we we're, we're a team. Yeah, we no, are I, a team. I need no, UCLA to to win the, and well, land on five because when that win total dropped all the way to four, yeah. the Big Ten championship game, uh, we coupled a little over four with a little under five and a half. Well, Bear, guess what? You still can win between one and seven points, even Perfect. eight points, and Perfect. I'm fine with that. I'll take a push Perfect. over a loss, obviously. Here's here's the my here's my line of reasoning in this one, Bear. I think this will hold true for some games this weekend where you have a rivalry game the week before UCLA USC played, and the loser of that rivalry game has nothing to play for this week. So right. UCLA lost last weekend, it's sort of an ugly game, 19-13. You know, it wasn't a great game. Lost right. to Washington the week before on the road. And now they host a Fresno State team with nothing to play for. You says four and seven, Bear. They're playing for your win total, but they're not playing for a bowl <laughs> anymore. So the older players are looking to the NFL. Players are eyeing the transfer portal already. And when you are a a smaller school, and I'll, I'll classify that by Fresno State, San Jose State, and you're Group playing a, a big brother in California, a UCLA, USC, a Cal, a Stanford. These players on Fresno San Jose State, this is a huge weekend for them, right? Because most of the time they were not recruited by UCLA and USC. They want to go, they want to go there. They weren't recruited. So they, they, they're going to take this game very, very seriously. And it just beat Colorado State upset last weekend. They're going to go in the Rose Bowl and try to beat UCLA. I think they're going to do it too, by the way. So I like Fresno State plus eight uh, here. They're also very well, actually, identical. that's a great way for me to play it, Jeff. If I if I I mean I could play money line, or I, I should probably just play your bet. You, play, you can you can play my bet. You can middle too. You can have a middle there. They're both, they're also basically identical in a lot of statistical categories. Obviously, UCLA plays a Big Ten schedule, and Fresno State does not. But uh, I like Fresno State here plus the eight points. This was nine and a half, by the way, on Monday. It's it's an eight now, so it's a play that's getting hit by by some important people. It is, and um, you're right. That was one of the classic. Like remember, remember Pat Hill, like at any place, any oh yeah, where paint the valley red type type of deal. That that was all about uh, <clears throat> Pat Hill building yeah. his team, his program. So um, yeah, I, I can get behind that. We were talking just before in the gambling group chat uh, about Kansas and KU potentially being the best team in the Big Twelve now, and how they led. In uh, in most of those games, yeah. and that's going to lead me to my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, and I am going to hop off of the Kansas train this week. Oh, Kansas train, uh, the, the Grim Reaper Express gave us a lot of money the last couple of weeks. However, I am going to take my winnings. I am going to hop off, and I am going to back Baylor, uh, getting a point and a half against KU. Uh, Baylor is really turned their season around. Um, I think you look at Kansas this last month, the gutting loss against rival K State, and then you rip off those three wins in a row as a dog. You're you're two and six. You win three in a row. Iowa State, BYU, Colorado. Now you're a win away from bowl eligibility. I just wonder how much that month is taken out yeah. of it. Maybe they are motivated inside that locker room uh, to get to six wins, to get to a bowl game, and kind of make something of this season. However, I think Baylor, the way the Bears have been playing, uh, I know it's not typically the best Dave Aranda defense that they've ever had, but with Sawyer Robertson, a quarterback, they've been much better offensively. And I trust Aranda to be able to figure out his scheme defensively to shut down Devin Neal or at least slow him down. So I'm going to take Baylor plus the one and a half here against the uh, the Jayhawks. 
Uh, I like I like kind of like jump off this train on this week, right, Bear? Because you, you look at at what Kansas has done. They've beaten three straight ranked teams as an unranked team, never been done before. Um, right. And this is the a perfect time to, to sort of jump off this this wagon here. Baylor's played good football. I think we people kind of forgot them after they lost to Colorado in that heartbreaking fashion. They played good ball since then, Bear. So I'm with you on this one here. My uh, my DraftKings sports book best bet for this weekend. James Franklin and Penn State, minus oh, yeah. 25 over Maryland. We love James Franklin in these spots, right, Bear? All he does is cover these games. This actually, this actually, I think, I think outside of the of the uh, sample size, right, where it's like between seven and 24 points, he always yep. covers these games. But I could, I could have done this in my fate of the week, Bear. I'm gonna ask you a question. Maryland has played, um, has played uh, uh, eight conference games this season. Mm-hmm. How many have they won, Bear? Would you would you guess eight eight conference? I believe games. they. Oh, I, I know they beat USC. Yeah. And I, I know that that's the last game that they won was yeah. the uh, was the that's USC. it that's it one that's one game. one conference game they lost to Michigan State they lost to Indiana Northwestern by twenty seven points Minnesota by two and a half scores they were a big they were a big favorite against yes. Michigan State too we had the Spartans Correct. up there I remember uh, Minnesota Oregon by two scores Rutgers by two scores Iowa by two scores. Uh, they're four and seven. And the quarterback might be out too. And he w- yeah, he got benched, was out last weekend. Morris was in, did not look good against Iowa. This is a James Franklin classic, isn't it, Bear? It's a James it Franklin classic, 42-7, um, just a drubbing of, of their opponent here. Uh, Penn State's playing for a home playoff game, right? Like they know they are. Wow. And they're, all, by the way, they're also playing for outside chance to, to be in the Big Ten Championship game, but they'll know the result by kickoff, though. So uh, I like uh, Penn State here to run this one up, as they always do in, in these games. Maryland's yeah. dead, too. 35 nothing. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Maryland might not score in this game. And he, and especially against Maryland, uh, you go back the last eight games against Penn State. Uh, Penn State has won and covered seven of them, and those seven wins kind of. Uh, come by an average of 37 points a game, and every single one of them has been by at least 17. So, yeah, there are a few teams out there that that James Franklin enjoys beating up as much as the uh, the state there just to the south in Maryland. Uh, a lot of recruiting ties there. A lot of uh, – remember to the day where he was going to potentially be a coach and waiting at Maryland, and then ultimately uh, never happened. So, yeah, I, I can see this one uh, getting out of hand in a hurry. Well, we got out of hand – a little bit in the gambling group chat, but all in uh, all in good fun. Sir, kidding aside, I need one of those jerseys, man. Those are awesome. I'll, I'll, look, so, I'll, I'll look. They said they were unavailable. I, I legit ordered them off a website. Well, it's kind of like the, you know, the, the line goes like there's no such thing. Oh, it's sold out. There's no such thing as a sellout. There's I sent, the, I sent their ticket. hockey account a, a DM a one ticket. time. There's always a ticket available for away in the building. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure – uh, around, around the uh, what is it the the Olshovsky Athletic Complex is that what it is? Um, <laughs> no, um, it, it's it's now the the Death Star. What, 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 I forget what they call yeah, it. Now, I'm yes. sure. I'm it was sure a, it was the a Casanova Star, Center. The, right, Casanova Center. Is there, what it was. Uh, there, 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 mm-hmm. Yes, there, there, there might be a uh, there, there might be a, a couple of those hanging around. We have to we have to get a, get our get our peeps on that. But uh, appreciate everybody you every one of you for. Uh, spending some time here with us this week again downloading wherever you get your podcasts spotify apple uh and please make sure you check us out on that uv channel yes. and our twitter feed to see that sharp oregon oregon jersey uh everybody uh, have a safe healthy and happy thanksgiving with uh, with all of your families and remember the less you bet the more you lose when you win